What if I didn't have to make a master part first before I made a silicone mold to make resin parts? How cool would it be if I could just 3D print my silicone molds? My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Do you ever get home with all your things, but you have nowhere to set them? So it all just ends up in an ugly, disorganized, and hard to work with pile like this, causing you unneeded stress? Well, don't let it ruin your life. Get an Alfred backpack hanger today. Did you know this episode's sponsor, PCBWay, offers injection molding services, including plastic molding, liquid silicone rubber, as well as insert and over molding. They offer a wide range of plastic materials from hard to soft and flexible varieties. Additionally, they offer a wide range of SPI mold surface finishes as well. Check them out for your next project. Link in the description below. I'm going to be making the bottom cap to this industrial squeeze bottle that I did in the previous video. <clears throat> so here's the part and what it looks like. And I'm going to make a mold in Fusion 360 around this part. And then that's what we're going to print to resin cast parts out of the mold. This is cross section of the mold. And that's what we're going to be printing on the Formlabs printer. We send it to the slicer, and these are the two halves of the molds that I'm going to print. This is all made possible by Formlabs. So they have a new material, and it's a silicone material that you can print. And I'm printing this in my Formlabs 3. I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can get a Formlabs machine as well. There is a $500 discount if you order the machine through Formlabs using my link. You have to go through the sales and then you'll get a discount. This material is really nice. Uh, there are some drawbacks here in the sense that you do need special clean out tank. The uh, liquid here is an N-butyl acetate mixed with isopropyl. Uh, which is what you normally use, but the N-butyl acetate is needed to help clean the uh, silicone residue. It smells like bananas. It's quite interesting, um, but it is an additional step and an additional cost. And I would say it's not easy to clean these molds. They, they're a little sticky, and you have to sort of print a couple of resin parts and clean them really, really well to sort of get that... Uh, stickiness removed you can kind of see that here so I'm placing this in the form cure you use the regular form cure to cure these uh, silicone parts with since I'm 3d printing these molds and this is the first time I've done this with this material there are some adjustments that I had to make to the part so I needed to avoid the cupping situation. Thus, you can see some of these cuts so that the mold doesn't have suction generated during the printing process. So some adjustments need to be made. And on these first sets, I printed with supports and that ends up being a problem. I'm going to pour a little resin on the top here. I just want to make sure that my resin isn't going to stick to the silicone and make sure it works the way it, it normally does. So because of the cupping, uh, the one mold has a hole in the bottom so that I didn't have any vacuum issues, uh, suction issues. And then I just pour in a little bit of silicone in there and cure it in the form cure and the resin comes right off. So in theory, this is gonna work i.e. the resin that I normally use in my silicone molds is not going to stick to the mold. Let's put it together, see what it looks like. That looks like a halfway decent seal. For the first part, I'm just going to use some standard resin. This is resin that I happen to have. 
it's tinted blue already. That doesn't really matter. I just need to pour some resin into the mold to sort of go through the process and see how it's going to work. And I apologize. I poured this off camera. I wasn't paying attention, <clears throat> but let's pull the part out. It's been cured under pressure, of course, in the pressure tank. And let's pull the part out and see what it looks like. I have some minimal flash here. And I'm sort of hoping that this resin part is going to pull some of these supports out of the mold. And that does not happen. So I reprint that half of the mold without supports. And hopefully this is going to work out. Let's put the two together and this should give me a nice part on the inside without having to have the texture of where the supports were uh, visible on the inside of the part. I'm using BJB's WC85 resin here. It's a crystal clear UV stable resin and I'm going to add some mica to it to give me the uh, color that I want in the part for the bottom cap and I'm going to use this copper from Arteza and we'll drop it in here we'll mix it in there and I will leave a link in the description below to Arteza uh, Micah's I'm an Arteza affiliate. We're going to suck some up into a syringe and we're going to inject it into the mold. Notice the mold is tipped so that it forces the air out the top through the vent holes. And you can see there's a couple of vent holes that are not venting correct. So I think this part has a low chance of success. Let's put it into the pressure tank and get the lid on it as soon as we can. And then we're going to cure this at uh, 60 PSI uh, under pressure with some heat for several hours so we can get a nice part. All right, let's demold the part. This is, I don't know, eight hours later or something like that. And we'll check out the part. It's a nice part. It has, it's not fully formed, but it does successfully cure in the mold and everything. And it gives me my first chance uh, looking at the color uh, that was generated from the part. So this process is really great if you want to try different materials and different colors. I'm going to um, super glue the mold back together. It is torn. It doesn't have a real high tear strength. And I have a special kit here to uh, super glue silicone back together. It's not just regular stuff. You need a special activator. And I'll leave a link in the description below to what I'm using and uh, hopefully where you can get it. And we'll glue the mold back together. And this is hopefully a solution to extend the life of this mold. So we'll use some more clear resin. And in this case, going to use a bronze I believe this again an Arteza resin so I'm changing the mica just slightly because I want to tint it uh, a little bit different than before it was a little too coppery and I'm going to go with some some more bronze so the beauty of this material is you could use a different durometer and different color to sort of get your visual part to match something else a way to speed up the process uh, potentially for your color material and finishes um, projects where you want to match some color or try different materials. So it degassed the material here. Let's suck it up into a syringe and inject it into the mold. I've cleared out those other vent holes. So hopefully we're going to get a slightly better part here this time. And it looks like the resins coming out of all the vent holes. So um, looks like it's going to be successful, at least initially. And we'll see what we get. Part is cured in a heated pressure tank, of course, as always. So we don't have any bubbles and we'll remove this from the part. I'm using some compressed air here and this helps pull the resin part out of the mold and reduces some of the stress on the silicone as I want the silicone mold to last. 
Let's review the materials and stuff that we used here. So we're using uh, BJB's WC85DL. DL means just it's the long version of this resin. That's what happened to have on hand. So the first part I made is this clear blue one that was purely a test to make sure that everything worked and I could put resin into the silicone. It wouldn't stick and I would get a good part. The next part I made here is with this copper mica from Arteza. I mean, gave me that part. Next, I went to this bronze. And then ultimately, I end up going to this strawberry on the far right. Um, but it's too red. And I really like the bronze one the best. I will leave a link in the description below to the Arteza material if I can and so I like this bottom it fits the style of the container the best in terms of color materials and finishes and I think it matches that really nice to give it that kind of industrial feel and of course on the left we've got the molds uh, that are 3d printed on my uh, form 3 and that's what makes this whole thing possible Again, link in the description below if you want to get one of these machines for your studio. It's not a hobby machine by any means, but obviously you're getting some advanced capabilities. This is a great way to sort of speed up your workflow and skip some steps and move directly ahead when you're prototyping stuff. So if finish is not super, super important and you really want to try out some different materials, this is an excellent, excellent way to go. Here's my thoughts on this process for these silicone printed molds. I think it works pretty good. The finish is pretty decent. You know, we get some build lines here on the side, but the surface isn't too bad. Got the detail that I wanted on the inside here. Um, so it definitely works. Do I think it's a complete replacement for making master parts to make resin parts? No. Uh, in certain instances where the finish isn't super critical, it's fantastic. Uh, it certainly reduces the time that it takes to make a resin part. I don't have to make that master part anymore and finish it, then mold it, I can go right to making resin parts. These molds smell, which I really dislike, um, and they're a little difficult to clean, and I don't like that either, right? The resin can remove that material after a couple of pours, but it needs to be improved. And I assume that over time, this silicone, whatever it is, is gonna get better. You know, the concept works, the resin doesn't stick to the silicone, and it acts very much like a regular silicone mold would. So I think it's a good uh, start, it shows a lot of promise, and I'm going to continue to use it in the correct applications. It's just a matter of time, probably, until the silicone uh, printing gets to be so good where you don't print master parts at all um, but we're not quite there yet it's going to take some time but i really like the process and i get resin parts very quickly that are strong durable i can make them any color i want and it really reduces my time to making prototypes to test things out for me as a designer uh, model maker and so I'm really encouraged by this material and the process of making these silicone molds and uh, look forward to doing more of these. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Bots and Design. I'm now on Blue Sky and unfortunately still on Instagram. Rock on. 
Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.